exciting times with the Selene sitting here behind me. Hey, we know we're pumping oil. Unreal. Well, guys, good news is no more oil leaks. Ooh. There you have it, guys. All right, guys, new day, new attitude. And if you look at this, we're all fixed. So upon closer inspection, once I ripped this thing out, I noticed that, well, it was a pretty clean break. So I took it over to Byron's down the road from my commercial shop. And well, he put a brand new fitting on. He had to clean up the, clean off the coating and whatnot, but that's not gonna hurt anything. So I'm gonna get this jam back in the tank and do a do over and we'll go from there. So enough rambling, intro screen. All right, guys, I think, I think we finally got this one figured out. I got a 90 on here, so that way this will clear the frame rail. I had to cut a section out of the hose to get a little shorter. You can see it's a little bit on a downward slope, and that is intentional because once the tank is up, then that hose is going to be going up, right? So that's there. The return's all good. Everything's tightened down nice and tight. I did find one tiny little drip down by the heater core there. So I think I've got that addressed. In a moment, I'll bump the key and check for any leaks and everything else. But right now I've just been actually checking for top dead center. So if we look down on the balancer, you can see some blue paint marker and then there's the timing marker. So see where the blue is on the timing marker and then there's the T on the balancer, well, the T is top dead center. And then the mark that's above that, I'm assuming it's probably around the 10 degree mark or so. And we really don't need to worry too, too much about that because we got everything pre-set in the holly. So we'll be able to mess around with that accordingly. We just need to make sure that our uh, rotor is pointing towards the number one spark plug. Moreover, you guys want to get really technical if you look down in there, you can actually see the top of the piston sitting pretty much right at the top. So I'm going to go ahead now, thread the number one spark plug in, just to validate that the piston is at the top at that marker, so we should be good. So you be conscious of that. Um, might need to get an angled fitting off of that, ultimately. And it's just coming over too far, and I think it's putting too much stress potentially on that fitting. So. I'm actually going to leave the tank like this and bump the key forward and we'll see if we have any fuel leaks now. No leaks. All right, you can usually hear once the pump has cycled and kind of gone through the motions and then it'll stay pretty consistent in terms of its sound and there is a little bit of a drip right there of course i didn't want to over torque that fitting down but um that looks minor doesn't look like we have any leaks on our returns i do the sniff test guys so get your sniffers out and especially where Stuff is going into the back sides of the rails. Seem to be good. Oh yeah, I got to uh, put a temporary bung in that hole right there. We're gonna have a huge vacuum leak. All right, so I'll tighten up that one fitting in the back. I think we're good from a fuel perspective. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we got top dead center. Pull the distributor out, do some oil priming, oil pump priming. 
and uh, hit the key. There it goes. Climb up in here now, bump the key a couple times before I commit to bolting the tank back up in there. Give myself a nice step. Disconnected battery. Damn it. Fire in the hole. Let's take a look here. Looks nice and dry. It's good. No leaks. Let's go check up in the engine bay. And if there's no leaks, then, well, I can put the tank in now anyways, but I think we're no leaks. Anyways, the tank is good. I'm gonna put the tank down, or put the tank up rather. So already got top dead center. I'm gonna get the tank um, stuffed back up and tighten up that line. From there, we'll pull the dizzy out Prime the oil pump and um, fire in the hole. Fire in the hole! <laughs> All right. Pull up the busy. Hey right, guys, so just so you can see, you should actually see a little bit of surface rust down there because you can see it's dry. So by spinning the shaft counterclockwise, we're going to be firing up the pump and all that should be lubricated when we're done. And you got oil coming out everywhere. Oil feed, oil drain on the blower. I thought I had it tight, but not tight enough. But hey, we know we're pumping oil. All part of the shakedown. Let's cover that up. news is we know that there's oil going through the supercharger and through the motor and I'll well, lubricate my floors now. Spill on aisle four. Oh, all over the alternator. It's 100% where it's leaking from now. Guys, it's not there. It's literally leaking out right here. Watch. Unreal. So fitting that. Oh. Guess it would have helped if I tightened that up. God damn it. Alright guys, no more oil leaks. You can see the only oil leak is coming off the end of the socket, which is good. It's exactly what we want. Look down in there now. You can see there's a bunch of oil. Things are looking lubricated. So we'll jam our distributor in, get the rotor facing towards number one cylinder, and we'll be in a position to uh, crank this thing over. All right, guys, home of the truth. Got all the oil leaks fixed, fuel lines are fixed, and I am just going to run a constant 12 volt to the coil right off the battery here for the sake of testing. So I'm just gonna get these terminals tightened up. As soon as I got this touch forward, um, coil's gonna be hot and we should be good to go in terms of the Holly kicking on and seeing if this thing will fire up. Let's see here. All right. Hey, it starts, it's alive, sweet. And fired right up on that holly. Times 
with the saloon sitting here behind me. We left off on this car firing up for the first time. It was running a little rough initially, and I did manage to get it sorted out once the camera was off because I sort of slept on it, went back through everything, and I was like, man, why does this thing seem like it's flooding out? And well, I had a three bar map sensor selected instead of the two bar that we actually have. The two bar is good for up to 15 PSI, give or take, which is pretty much where this blower is gonna max out. And I just assumed I had a three bar, but in fact, Holly advised me to buy the two bar. So I went in, redid the config file, and what else did I update in there? I think that's it. Um, I did get the fuel pressure sending unit. That came in from Holly, literally, you know, the next day. So now I can monitor the fuel pressure on the screen. We got the little gauge here as well. So we got this whole setup all nicely done. I'm gonna have to actually take all that off and get that bracket piece painted up that I've got going on there. And I did manage to get the first heat cycle in and I've changed the oil. So everything in the oil looked really good. No big chunks, no shavings, no nothing else. It smelled a little gassy from all the fuel that got poured um, in there as to be expected. So new filter, new oil after that first heat cycle. And now I need to wire up the electric fans. So I've got this input output connector that actually goes into the Holly. And this actually comes with all the wires that we need for the fans. So we got the contour fan set up in here and you know, they're all tidy and looking good. All our cooling system, everything else, it's all buttoned up guys, it's all working. So a few things that we need to do in terms of the wiring here. Get our fans hooked up, number one. So this is going to trip the relay to kick the fans on. Um, it's also going to take the input from the AC to know that once the AC is on, um, to make sure that the fans kick on. So this harness has pretty much everything that we need. Um, he did have a separate Dakota digital uh, installer slash controller that LMR pushes when you buy the contour fan setup. But with the Terminator X, you've got everything that you need in one place. And that way he doesn't have to download a separate Dakota digital app just to be able to check and see what the fans are doing. Everything will be able to be controlled through the Terminator X setup. So this has all the same inputs, you know, when the AC is on, it'll kick the fans on, everything else. You're gonna wire up the two relays um, for each fan. You gotta run some power wire for them. You gotta get some fuses for them. And I gotta run the relay. I gotta clean up this wire here. It's going to the negative side of the coil. And then I also need to get another relay wired up to switch 12 volts positive to the coil when the ignition is forward, so that, that way we get our spark. And we need to mess around and get our factory cluster gauges working. So if we look at these connectors right here, you know, this is what your engine harness would typically plug into. And we're gonna be checking these guys out. And um, I really wish I had, I have to see if I have a butchered harness that I can steal a pigtail off of because I don't want to cut or splice in this factory stuff. Been really adamant about that. So I'm gonna check that out. I also need to get a better fitting over here. You know, this is for our PCV. So I just kind of rigged something up that works for now, but um, definitely want to get that cleaned up. So just a few little button up items. And of course, I don't know if there's any brake fluid. I don't know if the brakes work in this car or not. Ooh, come on. There we go. Yeah, see our master is dry. So, ooh. So we gotta get our brakes going. Without brakes, can't drive the car. So uh, maybe once Gary shows up, he can help me bleed these brakes out because it is a two-man job. And that way, you know, once we have cooling, once we have our wiring cleaned up and stuff, then maiden voyage, why not, right? So really exciting times with the car, gonna go through and like I said, get this wiring done, pull some. So I get this connector clipped into the Terminator X stuff, which is down in the passenger side kick panel down there. Uh, we'll pull it out and see which wires exactly we need. They're all itemized here, guys. Just follow the directions. So AC kick input. So white with blue, 
And there's white with blue right there, right? So this is pretty easy. Electric fan number one output, electric fan number two output, AC shutdown. So you have all these guys here. There you have it, guys. Gonna go ahead, get this stuff wired up and get some other things. You guys have seen me do a lot of wiring. We'll see how involved I get with the camera and everything else, because at this point, I really just want to get this guy buttoned up because, um, yeah, it fires right up. It idles. It does everything that it should. I uh, really want to get it into a full closed loop, get that thermostat wide open, you know, get all the vitals, everything circulating, making sure that there's no leaks and, you know, just letting that Holly learn and getting all its parameters, you know, in mesh with everything that we've put in there in terms of our desired parameters. We'll get right into the wiring. All right, welcome to the kick panel, guys. So this is where all the action's happening. And right here, you can see inputs and outputs. All right, so we will take this dummy connector off. We will plug this connector in, and then we're going to grab all the wires that we need here. And from here, we'll be able to tap into exactly what we need. So there we go. All right, so, so I'm knee deep in the wiring here and trying to plan and route everything and I've made some really nice little harnesses such as these. So this is, for instance, the main power that's gonna go to the relays for the electric fans. And once I get the car up, I'll do the relay aspect of everything down on the bottom side there. So just to give you a nice idea of wire loom, shrink wrap, and a little bit of patience can do. Got our weather sealed style relays right here. These are extremely affordable off of Amazon. So those will be there for the relays. But now there's a couple wires here. Number one, power for the fuel pump, which um, that just really needs a really good 12 volt source. So gonna find a spot to connect that. That's the main red wire there. I've got another red wire here. This is my pull wire. So once I've got all the wires that I know need to come and go between the firewall, I'm gonna pull those through. You can see I've got the grommet out and I'm gonna have to slide the grommet back in when everything is said and done. And AC is another component because you gotta remember the AC wiring is actually run through the engine harness of the car. So we need to run our own wiring, which is super easy. One wire on the back. So it's pretty straightforward for the AC. If you go behind your climate controls and the switch that has the norm AC and max AC setting, just look for which wire on the back side of the connector lights up 12 volts when you're on one of those two settings. And from there, you can run one side of that wire to your pressure switch. And then through the pressure switch, it's gonna go to your AC compressor. And from your AC compressor, obviously on the other side of everything, you're gonna see grounds. And it's really that simple. Um, I'm gonna have a full video on wiring up AC on the twin turbo Coyote car. So I really don't wanna go into it in details twice. So one other factor that, you know, I'll be wiring in is for the fans to kick on uh, when the AC is turned on. I don't know if I'm going to do the whole turn your AC off underneath wide open throttle. If I could, but I just, I really don't see the point. Um, not on a streetcar, at least. So we got that. And what I've learned on the, what I think, and I could be wrong on this, guys. When you're using the Fox body harness, which apparently doesn't exist so much. So that's this manual here. See, Holly EFI Ford Mustang EFI harness kit, main harness only. So apparently if you use this kit, output number four, it's saying applications using OEM style Ford IAC use one of the Terminator X outputs, output four to control the IAC. If using the Fox Mustang harness, part number 558128, 558128. Output four is already connected from the ECU to the IAC connector. Be sure to select the proper IAC setting when setting up calibration in the handheld. So I'm not sure what this is gonna mean if I convert to four wire. I'm gonna have to do some digging on this. Um, but needless to say, I'm not gonna worry about this output number four. I'm more concerned about electric fan output one electric fan output two. Okay. So I just need to know it provides a ground to trigger the relay. So that's super easy. So moving on into some more interesting stuff and 
this car scenario for me. And Holly has actually got it wrong here. If you actually have this manual, so they're saying if you want to retain your factory style gauges, so your coolant temp and oil pressure and tack, which in fact, I am gonna wire these up. So the tack more specifically, 87 through 89, it's saying it's tan and yellow, and 90 and 93 is saying dark green and yellow. Well, flip these two around guys. 87 through 89 is actually dark green and yellow, and the um, 90 through 93 is a tan and yellow. So everything else is the same, red with white, white with red. And all of these wires live in these two connectors here, body harness connectors, which are not in use. So I've actually peeled back a little bit of the tape from the restoration of the harness that Mike and Mike did and did a really nice job at wrapping everything up here. And if you see, this black connector has our red with white and our white with red. So this is the one that I'm going to be wanting to send coolant temp and oil pressure to. Now, this guy is the one that has the tack, the dark green with the yellow, which is hiding on the backside here. This guy right here probably looks blackish on camera, but that's the one. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna take this pin out. I'm gonna take some other random pin out of this one, and I'm gonna stick that pin into this connector. Why am I gonna do that? I've got an extra pigtail here. So instead of me cutting wires and tapping into this beautiful factory harness, I am going to use this, which is gonna plug right on here like factory, and I'm gonna do my connections in here. In fact, it'll probably actually end up giving me an extra connection if I want it. So the thing that I'm gonna have to keep in mind is I'm probably gonna have to move some pins around on this backside, which is fine because um, or I can repin stuff in here. The only thing is, whoever works on this car next, I hope you watch this video because if I'm moving stuff around and this car ever goes back to stock and someone puts that in there, I am probably gonna put a little label on there and say, this was repinned, right? At least that would be the nice thing to do for the next guy, if there is a next guy. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and repin that accordingly. And I'm just gonna verify that I know the dark green and the yellow is correct. So I'm gonna move that over. We'll pull something else out. So I'll put the camera on there. You guys can sort of see how I'm moving pins around and um, get the connections made. And then we will have a nice plug and play harness connector that essentially we'll call it the gauges connector now. And that way we can retain everything in the factory cluster. So just to do a little test, this is white with red. All these gauges go off ground resistance, guys. So if we look in here, we'll turn the lights on. Okay, let's power up our gauges. Okay, and um, find the ground to touch. Probably just a steering column area here. So I'm just doing some troubleshooting here and just to show you guys something. So I actually cut this pigtail off a four cylinder harness. Notice this is red with white, that is white with red, okay? Notice on the body side of the car, they're both red with whites. Well, listen for the white with red, because it's a solid red with a white. And going all the way over here, Inside the car, pin number nine is a red with white. Funny enough, I went and validated against a parts car, which is an 89, and it's white with red on the inside. So it's like Ford ran out of wire or something. Said, oh, screw it. Let's just make the oil pressure sending unit wire the same as the coolant temperature sending wire. Like, unbelievable. Anyways, I confirmed it. I know which pins I need on that connector. So I can pin that guy accordingly, knowing that everything will be okay, hopefully in here on the cluster side. So continuity doesn't lie. 
Um, it beeps, it does everything that it should, so we should be good to go here. Let's go pin that connector. Out. So, we know, and this makes sense, right? The four cylinder, you know, should really hold true to the same colors. And funny enough, I believe this is actually off an 89 four cylinder. So, all right guys, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pull this connector out, okay? And I'm just gonna use these three wires. This purple with yellow is gonna become my tack wire, is how I think I'm going to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, just to simplify this, I'm gonna pull out this blue one, and that way that purple one will line up. This guy will be a dead one, so that guy will just kinda of be, case who knows, maybe we're gonna need that for something else later, but if you look, Funny enough, that lines up too, right? This yellow with red, yellow with red. So anyways, let's get this out. We're gonna put this dark green with the yellow where the blue one is, and then that way we can put our negative side of the coil onto this guy, and that's gonna send our signal for the tap. Approaching midnight and I got wire and ends and bits and wire loom and everything scattered all over the floor, but the wiring is done. As you can see here, the last part was wiring up the contour fans. Everything wired up nicely here. I committed guys, I've wrapped, I've coated, I've fastened and all of this just because I am that confident in my work that it's all going to work no problem. So I should just have to throw my two 15 amp fuses into the fuse blocks, hook up the battery, and all of the wires that I have run should be good to go. The tack should work now. The only thing that's not gonna work is the oil pressure and water temp gauges because I need to get the sending units for them. But rerouting for the switch 12 volts, the fuel pump hot feed, um, all of that stuff that was kind of loose and dangling and hanging out has all been routed properly and tucked away. So that is good. The AC, I've got all the wiring run that I need and it's there. I'm just waiting for the connectors to come in, the pigtail for the pressure switch, and then the one for the actual compressor itself. So for now, I don't even have the rest of the AC lines hooked up, so I'm not overly concerned there. So I'm gonna put the car down um bump the ignition see what things look like see if it recognizes the fans um that would be super cool if it does uh, and then i can kind of set the temperature for and you know what you can control both right so you can just say one fan and then maybe kick on a second fan or kick on both at the same time whatever so as long as all that wiring is good uh gary shows up tomorrow morning i'm gonna get him to help me bleed the brake system out and if um, the fans are working and the brakes are working, then should be able to see if this car will move underneath its own power. So exciting time. So I'm gonna put the car down, bump the key, see what things look like. So just to point out, you can see that the harness that's going into the car where I tapped in for the tachometer, for the water temp and the oil pressure, everything is tucked and hidden away there. We got this blue wire here. This is gonna be for the AC compressor. So that's what that guy's doing here. I've got 
this red wire hanging out, that'll be for the coolant temp. And then I've got a black wire hanging out here. That's gonna be for the oil pressure. So I've got everything there. And then of course, the other side of the blue wire right here, this will be going to the pressure switch once uh, that comes in. So this will give you guys an idea of how the wiring is all run and got everything tucked down below on the lower side of the firewall there and you know out of exhaust sway and any moving parts anything like that so let's see what happens when we um, put on the negative terminal here look at that not even a spark beautiful well guys good news is we've got all the factory gauges working in the cluster everything plug and play factory sending unit on the oil pressure switch and water temp switch and everything is working nicely up in here. You can see actually temp gauge is still up as is the uh, oil pressure there. If we, uh, there we go. Everything kind of resets itself. So everything is good there. Bad news is, well, I guess it's not horrible news. I ended up resealing this Mr. Gasket chrome housing. There was a tiny little leak at the bottom of that thermostat housing leaking on top of the timing cover. And I thought, yes, I figured out what the leak is. Well, unfortunately, um, no, I have not figured out what the leak is, but well, that wasn't the, the culprit. So you can see here, we got some coolant. Some of this is actually just the overflow because yeah, I filled it up too much. You can see we got some on the sway bar here. Oh, it just dripped. And then we have some that's right on the front underneath the crank pulley here. And I was like, what? You can see it now that the engines got up to temperature. And I guess that is, you know, in terms of diagnostics, of course, you can put a pressure test on the system. You could do lots of things, but always getting stuff up to temp or to the point where you know the issue is happening is going to help you chase down leaks a lot more. Now, with everything being polished and shiny on this car, it really makes it hard for investigation. Now, the nice thing is, is that coolant kind of leaves sees so like these water spots and I can see where it was dripping from the back of the water pump onto the timing cover there. So long story short, water pump needs to come off, which sucks because, well, you need to drain the cooling system. You need to pull the uh, some brackets off. Ultimately, what's going to have to happen, AC compressor is going to have to get unbolted after, of course, I get all the AC lines and everything hooked up. That's fine. There'll be enough Flex and movement. Well, actually, I'll just disconnect the lines. There's nothing hooked up in the system. AC compressor out, tensioner off, and then the bracket for the power steering pump is gonna have to come off. And then um, I think, obviously, you gotta disconnect the lines going to the pump, and whew, all that stuff needs to come off, guys. That blower bracket needs to come off. Oh, I know why there was uh, a leak. There's no gasket. Unreal. Seriously guys, if I have to notch something here, I will. This is absolutely ridiculous. Guess what? This is getting a notch. You guys, there's no way that you should have to take your blower bracket off just to service your water pump. In reality, it's not, it's the ARP hardware's fault, I think. I don't know if maybe that bolt is a hair longer over factory, but um, yeah, you get something, hopefully I can grind that out. I don't feel like I need very much. Woo! Got it. Just that little bit, guys. All we needed. All right. Pull this out of here. Ooh. And you can see it's pretty clean in there other than some gasket maker and some chosen spots. And well, I understand some people just go for gasket maker without the gaskets. You can see where they scuffed up the plate here. But ultimately, you can see right here. See this outline? That is most likely where the water was ever so slightly going down because that's Remember I was telling you about like deposits and that's the outline of the timing cover. And ultimately 
if you remember, it was leaking right around here, if I remember correctly. So I'm gonna be using gaskets and gasket maker collectively together. And here you can see like he globbed a lot on, you know, to the point where it could be a little restrictive. You know, obviously the car was cooling down fine, but anyways, we're gonna clean all this up, take this plate off. We're gonna put the backing plate gasket on the back side of that, that on the front side, clean all our surfaces up, jam this back together, and hopefully, fingers crossed, no more coolant leaks.